and welcome to a video where I am going to go over the differences between the three types of Ashford rigid heddle looms. A couple of things up front. I'm recording outside today um, because it's beautiful, but it is a little windy, so I apologize for the wind. I'm hoping the microphone I'm using will make it so you don't hear too much wind noise, but likely the camera is going to shake a little bit. I apologize. Second, um, the, some of these are, are older model, uh, older models of, of the looms that Ashford makes, and I'll talk about that when I get to each individual loom. So let's begin with the standard rigid heddle loom, which is this one right here on the bottom. What are some things that are great about it, and what are some things that are not so great about it? Um, first off, it comes in a variety of different sizes. This is the 32 inch, and um, it is solid wood construction, just like all the Ashford Rigid Huddle Looms. And it is the thickest and beefiest and heaviest per size of all the Rigid Huddle Looms made by Ashford. So what are the pros about it? It gets the job done. It's a workhorse. It's a solid loom. Uh, further, if you buy a new, the newer version from Ashford, it comes pre-drilled with um, holes in the bottom for putting in a warping board. It does not come with the pegs if you buy it new, but you can find this size peg um, as a dowel rod at your local craft store and cut it to size or Lowe's, Home Depot, that sort of thing, or buy from Ashford if you don't feel like fidgeting with a dowel rod. Um, the newer models also come with a double heddle block. Um, I personally like weaving with single heddles so I had another loom that I sold and I took the double heddle block that came on this loom and swapped it out with the single heddle block since I don't weave double heddle anyways. Um, so that's why you see the single heddle block on this loom. Even So this is the newer version Ashford loom, but just with the older style block. What are the negatives of this loom? There aren't many. It's a great loom. Um, because it doesn't fold though, it, it's, it's harder to move it around. It's a big loom. I mean, the 32 is honking huge, but even the 16, which is half this length, is still a pretty big loom to be touting around. Um, then the other con is, is it does come as bare wood. This one has been finished by me. Um, so it's important when you have a bare wood loom to finish it. You can paint it, polyurethane it. Um, I do a, a, a beeswax finish. I get Howard Feed and Wax from the local um, handyman store and or home improvement store. And I put that on once a year um, just to keep the wood nice and fresh. I like the feel of the bare wood. Um, so in a pinch, if you don't have a lot of money and you want to get weaving quick, you can just take some mineral oil, put it on a cloth, wipe the loom down, and again, do that about, about oh. once a year. So that is the standard loom. Next up is the knitter's loom. And if this is the workhorse, this is the quirky loom right here. This loom is just a quirky, quirky loom. It's my favorite out of all three styles that Ashford makes. Um, but it is, it's definitely quirky. Um, first of all, when you weave on it, the way you do it is you notice that, that the loom is not a straight flat line like the standard loom is. The back beam angles up. What's nice about that is when you are propping this on a table, the angle's not as severe where you weave right here in the part where you're going to be actually playing around because um, the, the angle here flattens out in the front part. So you can imagine if this is propped on a table, this is, is more like I'm weaving flat on a table when it's propped versus this loom right here, if I angle it up roughly about the same amount, and, oh, these are heavy. Um, that angle here in the front where you're actually weaving is more severe. Um, some people will love that and some won't care one way or the other. I'm one of those that absolutely loves that. And that's what really, really sold me on the knitter's loom is I love love, love how the back beam angles up and I get a flatter area to weave in on the front. So the knitter's loom, it, the other big thing about it is it does fold up. And when it's fold, folded, um, it becomes super portable. In fact, you can see it, if we put the sample it up here, it, it folds down even more compact than the sample it if we're talking front to back length. Um, it's also the lightest per size of the looms. Um, so I don't have a 16 inch sample, but the sample it's 
are, are, are slightly um, heavier than, than the, um, oh, I can't talk today, than, than the knitter's loom. I may be wrong about that. They may be roughly equal or this one might be slightly lighter, but it just makes it super portable. So um, that's the knitter's loom. The wind is blowing away my cue cards here. So now let's get to the sample it loom. Again, this is an older model sample it loom. So this is the eight inch model. They don't make it anymore. They make the sample it in 10 or 16 inch, but the, the lengths are the same front to back. The other thing you'll notice is this is a single heddle block. Now, again, all Ashford looms, if you buy them new, come standard with a double heddle block. So what are the pros of the sample it? It's the cheapest out of all of them. That's probably its biggest pro. It's also great if you have mobility issues. If you see here, if I kind of sit in front of the sample it and the um, standard, if I'm weaving and I need to reach back here to manipulate the back beam, it's not nearly as far as a reach for here as it is on the standard. It's much more of a reach. Further, the distance from the front beam to the heddle block is less. It's about a couple inches less. And so if you do have like arthritis or bad shoulders or just short arm span, let's say you're getting a loom for a kid, you know, that, that, that reach not being as far can be really nice and save you some pain and suffering. Or if you're a kid, frustration of having to kind of stand up to manipulate things. Everything's just a lot closer in the samplet. The cons of the samplet are one, just like the standard, it doesn't come finished. Um, so you can see this one's overdue for some refinishing. Um, but, um, and the wood is not as thick on the samplet as it is on the standard rigid head of loom. And, but it's roughly the same thickness as the um, knitter's loom. The difference is the knitter's comes finished and the samplet does not. So what loom is best for each person? Um, the standard loom, I feel like, is best for those who plan to weave in just one location. You've got a craft room, that's where you're going to put the loom, you're going to weave there all the time. You're not going to be going from a vacation house to your regular house or, or wanting to weave outside or in this room or that room, depending on the season. You're going to be in one place, it's going to hang out there. The standard loom is excellent for that, especially, especially if you're getting the larger standard looms that aren't going to fit through a doorway easily. This one does not fit through a doorway easily. Um, so that's who this one's best for, those who just plan to weave in one spot and you want the best bang for your buck. This is great for that. Who is best served by the knitter's loom? The knitter's loom is best for somebody who's looking for a loom that's lightweight and highly portable but you want to still have that full length front to back beam, or you want a wider loom than, than the, the sample it comes for. That's where the knitter's loom really shines. Um, further, if you're looking for something super portable, if you compare the 12 inch knitter's loom to the 10 inch, this is an eight, but just imagine two more inches on this, the 10 inch sample it, it is more compact front to back and um, this one will fit into like a, a carrying bag much easier than the sample it because it's not as deep and it's not as long. Um, so that's where, again, the, the, the knitters really shine. So who would be best served by a sample it loom? Kids. If you have a shorter arm span, um, the sample it's great. If you're looking for a tinker loom, a loom where you just plan to bring it all over the place and just try out different little things, um, the sample it is great for that. Because it is not far front to back, it doesn't have a lot of loom waste. Um, it, we, things weave up, ooh, apparently quick on it. And it's just a fun little loom for tinkering around. Um, so it's a great second loom if you've already got like a big loom and you want something little to just play around with. This is great. You may ask yourself, well, why can't I just play around on the big loom? If you've got like the, a wider loom and you're only weaving narrow, the beat can become very uneven very quick because the heddle's so wide and has so much play in it. 
Whereas, you know, if, you, if you're weaving a narrow width on a narrow loom, you don't have as much play to the heddle. So again, that's where the sample it really, really shines. It's also great, like I said, for people with shoulder issues who don't have as much mobility in their shoulders or their back um, because it lets you kind of get to everything much easier with less body movement or range of motion. So there are the three Ashford looms.